On behalf of the Fiki Center for Sustainability Leadership, I welcome you all to this session on financing the green MSMEs, during which experts will provide guidance on the intricacies of green financing mechanisms available to MSMEs, share some successful case studies, and discuss practical strategies for integrating sustainability into SME operations. I'm sure you will all agree that the importance of sustainable practices cannot be overstated. They can drive growth, enhance competitiveness, yeah. and also minimize environmental impact. From renewable energy projects to energy efficient technologies and beyond, the possibilities are vast and the benefits are manifold. Today's session is part of the series of awareness sessions being organized by the FIKI Center for Sustainability Leadership with the objective of encouraging MSMEs to embrace sustainability as a core pillar of their business strategy, paving the way for a greener, more resilient future. We are extremely privileged to have amongst us Dr. R.K. Singh, Chief General Manager and Vertical Head, Green Climate Fund and Energy Efficiency of SIDBI. Dr. Singh heads SIDBI's dedicated vertical on Green Climate Fund and Energy Efficiency, which has been set up with a view to facilitate greening of MSMEs in line with the country's commitments at COP26 and increasing the resilience of MSME sector to combat climate change. Thank you very much, Dr. Singh, for joining us today. I now request Ms. Sudha Shivkumar, President, Fiki Ladies Organization, and Director Shiva's Auto Components Private Limited to deliver the opening remarks. Sudhaji is the 40th National President of the Women's Wing of FIKI, set up to promote entrepreneurship and professional excellence among women. Over to you, Sudhaji. Thanks so much, Ava, and a very warm welcome to all of you to this awareness session on SIDBI's Green Finance Schemes for MSMEs organized by FIKI Center for Sustainability Leadership. India is expected to become the third largest economy in the world with a GDP of 5 trillion in the next three years and touch 7 trillion by 2030. India's micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, like in most developing countries, are the cornerstone of economic development with their leading role in providing large-scale employment and strengthening the complex supply chain of goods and services. Approximately 6.5 crore MSMEs in India contribute close to 30% of the GDP of the world's uh, largest economy, employing around 11 crore people with a share in its export of nearly 40%. Statistics are always a great support. Now, more than ever, financing green MSMEs is of paramount importance. Simply put, green financing is any investment, in, such as bank loan made towards green sectors, such as renewable energy or green activities, such as purchasing environment-friendly goods and services. This not only brings about social and environmental co-benefits, but also enhances the overall health of MSME and contributes to the progress on the sustainable development goals. With climate change becoming an increasingly urgent global concern, it is imperative that the transition towards sustainable and environmental friendly practices means importance. MSME being the backbone of our economy has a pivotal role to play in this transition. Um, green financing schemes such as those offered by SIPI provides MSMEs with the necessary financial support to adopt eco-friendly technologies, improve energy efficiency and, and of course reduce carbon footprint. The role SIPI, the principal financial institution plays in promoting this just cannot be undermined. SIDBI has been playing a stellar role in facilitating greening of MSMEs in line with government's net zero commitments 
uh, embodied in their Panchmrit framework. Sidbi has sold out, rolled out several initiatives for extending assistance to the MSME sector, and it is just so appropriate we are there with them here today to work on climate resilient measures by MSMEs. It would be apt to say that they have been leading from the front, and it is wonderful to have with us Dr. R. K. Singh, CGM and Vertical Head, Green Climate Fund and Energy Efficiency. With diverse experience of more than three decades, Dr. Singh has pioneered the cause of financial inclusion of micro enterprises and is known to have made a huge impact through several path breaking initiatives he has throughout his career. I would request Dr. Singh to present details on the numerous schemes and measures introduced by SIDBI to support green projects in the MSME sector. We are all aware that FIKI has been committed to furthering the sustainability agenda and its newly set up Center for Sustainable Leadership is geared to playing a key role in accelerating India Incorporation's climate action. As we gather here to discuss the financial uh, financing of green MSMEs, it is critical to acknowledge the significant role women play in the MSME sector. Women entrepreneurs contribute immensely to the growth and sustainability of MSMEs, often overcoming numerous challenges and barriers along the way. Their resilience, creativity, and determination are truly commendable and deserve our utmost appreciation and support. Tiki Flow has been working towards catalyzing women entrepreneurship since its inception in 1983 by leveraging its network and influence in uh, Delhi and the 19 chapters across 11,000 members, Piki Flow's contribution to MSME has touched over lives of several million women. The possibility of green financing to support Indian MSME's sustainable transition are endless, but it'll only be through consorted efforts of government financial institutions and the MSME themselves, that we'll be able to tap the opportunity to the fullest. Together, let's pave way towards a more envir environmentally conscious and a very prosperous future. Thank you so much, Abba. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Singh, may I now request you to address us? Yeah, so are we audible now? Yes, very much. So, Ms. Potter, I am... Uh... Out here, uh, along with my colleague Pranav, he takes care of entire capacity building uh, initiatives with Sidbi Green does. Uh, so, green afternoon to everybody uh, who's out there to hear us. And uh, in fact, we always participate in these sessions because we can learn more uh, and, and respond it through our responsive uh, schemes. So I will just uh, will put the presentation on screen. Is it now visible? Yes. Yes, it uh, is. Yeah. So uh, Sidbi, you all know, like we do uh, right from direct credit to a lot of digitization efforts, uh, right from PM Swanidhi to uh, PSB loans in 59 minutes or Udyam Assist platform. Uh, Sidbi has made a lot of inroads on uh, digitization side. Uh, and digitization and greening has become top to agenda. And our approach of Sidbi today, the new Sidbi, uh, which we are now uh, taking forward, is just plain ABC. A is app based, which is digitization based, digital access to credit. Uh, B is branch based, where our branches are there, 100 branches. Uh, where anybody can reach uh, and we attend to uh, their requirements of credit needs. And C is co-partner base, which is uh, we operate uh, many of our engagements and initiatives through partners. And because that is uh, quite important uh, for SIPB to, uh, to move forward and to deepen our inroads. Next. So we picked up green as an agenda because the country adopted uh, net zero format with Panchamrad and all of us uh, know that 
but if we see uh, just a small hint on why green, 33% of India's GDP is highly dependent on nature. And then if it is dependent on nature, that way it is quite vulnerable also. Next. Now, if we see banks activity, uh, whenever banks and entrepreneurs, they do business and bank lend for that business, it is quite vulnerable to the climate impact. And that is why this, this also leads to a lot of risk and delinquency coming into uh, banking forth. So it is quite important to attend to this so that the enterprises are robust and the banking portfolio is also robust. Uh, if you see the right side of it, uh, portfolio emissions through global financial institution is 700x time larger than direct emission means uh, ultimately bankers are financing all hard to emit uh, industries and then embedding environment and social uh, management framework or risk assessment tool within lending has become very crucial. So that is how the green has become crucial. Next. Now if we see 53% uh, of scheduled commercial bank, commercial uh, means credit is dependent on nature and its ecosystem. Uh, so you see agri part is around 17%. Uh, if you see food processing, two person. So, so what I we just wanted to indicate is if there is a vulnerability in this portfolio that needs to be addressed. Next. Now, coming to uh, like if we see there are two types of risk: physical and transition risk. I will not dwell on this. But anywhere sudden floods are coming up, the uh, enterprises are at risk. The uh, Banking assets are at risk. Similarly, suddenly drought happens. Um, extended uh, winter is going on. So we every day we see a lot of uh, uh, unnatural things happening to the nature, and this all impacts all of us together. And so green finance is a challenge. Means climate change is a challenge, but green finance is a a large opportunity both for entrepreneurs as also from the banking side. If we just see energy efficiency alone needs 1 lakh crore funding needs. Uh, if we see the electrical vehicle side, it is around 207 billion dollars requirement. If we just see the circular economy, it would be running into 18 billion dollars, uh, which is required only on the credit side. So a lot of uh, uh, potential lies there and how do we address is what we will try to address in this quick uh, thing. And if we see the policy ecosystem, as I mentioned, uh, we have adopted a national uh, ambition of going EV way, in, uh, which is EV 30 at the rate 30. That is by 2030, 30% 30 of Indian vehicles have to go EV way. And this market size, as I mentioned, is 206 billion. Uh, similarly, um, the waste management is quite crucial and we have to really attend to that. So a lot of waste which we are generating, uh, we, it needs to be reduced, it needs to be reused and recycled. The, uh, just now, um, in the budget also, you have, uh, all of us uh, saw that a lot of thrust has been laid on how do we reach the net zero and in that regard, how do we convert or attend to renewable energy and other uh, emerging areas. So this is what said we, we designed the green mission. The green financing is very simple. Whenever we do green financing, every case which uh, we do, it has to run through an environment and social risk management framework, which is very easy. Uh, we don't say that any enterprise which falls in red category of pollution control board, will not be funded. What we say is they need to address the aspects which are flagged by pollution control board NOC. And similarly, the social aspects, uh, are they impacting the nature? Are they taking care of the safety and hygiene needs of workers? So these are aspects which are embedded now in CFP process. And once somebody gets through this ENS framework, uh, they also need to be amenable to be measured on that or uh, the funding which they are availing 
is it uh, resulting into energy savings or the greenhouse gas emissions now these two important criteria really make it up and going on the green side and i don't think it is quite a problem because we in Sydney have seen in last uh, one and a half two years uh, the availment from msmes for green credit has risen 16 times uh, so which is what uh, we are quite confident that this would work so when we started this we we uh, started on a core strategy format one was we tried to tag our existing portfolio that what is oriented towards green so we call it green tag loans then we move to the green loans which we are doing third level which we uh, would be working is green msmes where the entire building the product process design technology is uh, towards green and for this we are uh, we have started and that is our endeavor that green clusters should come up so the uh, msmes reside in clusters and there is ardent need that we should work on that if you see this slide the innovative financing uh, for a green future we have picked up five missions the first is mission solar where we are uh, working with msmes and we work on very simple format that jaise har ghar ki chhat pe uh, water tank ki uh, water tank is there similarly we should have solar roof power and in this mission solar we are funding solar uh, parks we are funding solar captive uh, plants and all these Second comes mission energy efficiency. Thousand plus clusters in India are energy inefficient, and we are working intensively right from conducting an energy health checkup, which is done through energy audit, and uh, enabling MSMEs to go for green investments based on the energy health checkup findings, which finds out that what is the process uh, loss which is going on what is the design related changes which if tweak some way it can really up the margins of sme third mission which we are working is mission ev and this is uh, a program monitored at uh, niti ayog and pmo level we are trying to create an ecosystem of entire ev ecosystem which is right from charging station to oems to uh, battery uh, manufacturer or battery strapping, entire aggregators, MSMEs, uh, we are trying to address this through Mission EV. And uh, for this mission, ways to environment days, here we are working on circular economy, which is compressed biogas, solid waste. And uh, so entire, uh, like we, we try to work with MSMEs, both from supply side, service provider side, as also on the manufacturing side. Uh, uh, when you do something new and innovative like these, uh, you really end up uh, both the sides having challenge. The supply side, which is the banking and lending side, and the demand side, which is MSME side. So while on the demand side, we have, uh, like I mentioned, we have energy health checkup uh, format, uh, which we uh, start with. Uh, we have also launched tools like Unati, where uh, any MSME can do self health checkup in terms of do what do I do uh, and how do I do to uh, improve my margin in terms of uh, energy efficiency. So uh, and on the supply side, why banker should lend? We have been coming out with risk sharing facility. Uh, we have been operating a risk sharing facility for last eight years, and here we have. Uh, like uh, given a comfort to 14 lender that if you lend to energy service companies, uh, the backstop guarantee would be provided by risk sharing uh, facility. So any project which comes to the banker, SIDBI or any banker partner, uh, we filter it through our technical evaluation process. And uh, uh, after that, we give in principle to the bank and provide 75% risk coverage facility to them. Same facility we have started for solid waste as also for electrical vehicles, and we are going to improve it uh, further. Uh, any case which SIDBI now does, it falls through a green definition framework. We call it autonomy, and um, uh, this is basically we have uh, identified 69 activities uh, which uh, more or less cover entire clusters uh, if they are thinking of going green. Uh, one last mission was Mission Nurture the Nature, 
Here we have created a technology stack of 890 technologies and this is embedded in digital process. So anybody applying for a loan in SIDBI, once he walks through that end-to-end -end digital process, it automatically tags that this is green or not green. And it also helps the appraising officer that this is a green uh, proposal and it should walk the green journey as also get a green comfort in terms of better rates uh, which are given to uh, these agencies. Now, uh, just launching financing programs would not do. So we do a lot of work on the development side of it. Like uh, you will see the uh, center uh, bottom point, the cluster level engagements. Uh, we have started engaging with artisanal clusters and are enabling to uh, go green. Uh, one example is we are working in Moradabad where we have enabled uh, almost 70 MS, uh, MS micro enterprises to uh, convert from coal fired furnaces to gas fired furnaces. On the right side, if you see uh, the green advocacy, Silvi is going carbon neutral. So we wanted that we should ourselves become carbon neutral. Then only we can advocate it to others. Uh, we have also set up a, a thought leadership platform which is Green Indian Financial System. It is uh, through AFD France, who have a global lead on uh, green financing. Shakti Finance, they are a very uh, uh, well-known policy think tank on greening. And SIDBI is there. Uh, within this uh, uh, platform, we have set up a green uh, financing platform for women, uh, which is having a mental pool and network of women uh, is strengthened through this grow platform. And uh, uh, this, this basically is trying to uh, build capacity of MSMEs uh, to go green. Uh, we have a lot of international cooperation uh, which SIDBI is doing and we onboard a lot of global forums. Uh, till now, we would have reached out to more than 15,000 MSMEs and have catalyzed investment of $1.7 billion, which has uh, led to uh, GHG emission reduction of more than 2 million tons CO2 equivalent. Next. So next bullet. So these are our focus areas on mitigation and adaptation, right from energy efficiency, renewable energy, waste, mobility, anything which impacts the climate or which adversely uh, impacts uh, the climate, uh, we are poised to address it. And every other day we come out with uh, like uh, the new areas and how do we address it. And this includes building capacity of SIDBI people, uh, also building capacity of uh, fellow bankers, so that the entire banking gets uh, into this. And this endeavor of PICI, we would appreciate, which is to create capacity among MSMEs, uh, so that they look at green, which is today a volunteer uh, thing. Tomorrow it will be a compulsory format. Because if we are looking up to grow from local to regional and regional to national and national to global level, we need to transform and transit ourselves to the green agenda. Next. Now, this is uh, our Pori scheme and uh, Pranav will run you through quickly on this. Pranav. Thank you, sir. So, uh, whatever sir has mentioned that we are focusing on green area and, and uh, in the earlier slides, there were certain uh, sectors which we are trying to cover uh, through our direct finance. We have uh, 80 plus branches across India, mostly in uh, industrial cluster or nearby. And through that, we are trying to provide support to MSMEs uh, through our direct finance portfolio. And here, uh, in uh, for green finance, we have basically two products. We have not. Uh, introduce so many products so that people get easily confused that under which scheme we can be covered. So we have basically two schemes which in totality covers whatever aspects green finance we are doing. So this is our first product, end-to-end -end energy efficiency or FORI we call it, FORI scheme. Here if anybody is going for uh, expansion, any existing unit is going for expansion in energy efficiency or solar or, or any equipment they are buying on sustainability side. Uh, so there we can finance up to rupees 50 crore. The repayment period is around five years can be uh, increased to seven years. 
the interest rates are very very competitive in fact uh, even our other schemes also uh, this this interest rate is better than our own schemes the other schemes uh, any any enterprise going for energy efficiency uh, equipments or technology or solar rooftop or even ground mounted solar uh, projects and electric vehicles can be covered under 40 fun, 40 scheme uh, msmes in manufacturing or service uh, industry or in fact educational institutions hospitals those can be covered under 40 scheme uh, this is all end to end process and entirely digital so this is also as sir mentioned uh, the first one the, the a abc uh, when uh, sir mentioned a on uh, we are working on apps so here also uh, through 40 scheme basically uh, through digitization we are trying to reduce our carbon footprint for each and every loan and uh, this process is also uh, entirely digitized simpler dispensation uh, around two to three days uh, the cases are being sanctioned or ma maximum one week time and under this Pori scheme we are financing up to 100 percent without collateral and, and on very customized terms basically so this was the first scheme and the second scheme is green finance scheme so whatever is not covered under 40 scheme 40 scheme was for existing enterprises but in, but the greenfield enterprise or whatever is not covered under 40 uh, can be covered under the green finance scheme here also all type of green projects including renewable energy uh, roof uh, solar ground mounted or uh, the wind energy anything can be covered under green finance scheme here uh, under this scheme we are providing up to 20 crore to any msme or service provider uh, um, uh, people and and service provider and aggregator can get up to 50 crore uh, the promoter contribution here is 20 percent in 4e we were uh, financing up to 100 percent here we are financing up to 80 percent the repayment period can go up to 10 years and the interest rate again is very very competitive uh, this is MCLR link starting from 8.5% to 10%, but obviously based on ratings, generally uh, the interest rates are falling between 8.5 to 9.2 or 9.3. Uh, both existing and greenfield units can be covered. And <laughs> in like uh, renewable, renewable energy, uh, there are EPC model, ESCO and ESCOs uh, are working on those, on those areas where the MSMEs don't have the expertise, they prefer to go through EPC contractor or a uh, turnkey basis projects. So those are all uh, eligible under the green finance scheme. Besides this, uh, very recently uh, we have started, actually this is approved by Ministry of MSME uh, gift scheme. Uh, this is MSME green investment and financing for transformation. So any project going for energy efficiency uh, is given interest subvention of 2%. The loan has to be up to 2 crore and the interest subvention uh, up to uh, of 2% is being provided uh, to MSMEs going for energy efficiency project. Uh, there is one more scheme basically and uh, there is one more uh, subsidy program actually. I, I don't have right now the slide uh, that is SPICE. So any project going for circular economy so uh, uh, within circular economy if any project is coming there is a capital subsidy of 25 percent up to 12.5 lakhs rupee by ministry of msme that is also a spice project uh SIDB is the nodal agency for both of uh, these these uh, subsidy or interest subvention schemes thanks as I mentioned, like solar, uh, we can cover all the models. So we have a captive model if any MSME is uh, going for the solar project and consuming the entire electricity for themselves is called captive model. And otherwise also maybe group captive or third party sale. There are so many projects coming here and there uh, in, in line with our mission solar or country's mission to generate uh, 500 gigawatt through renewable energy. So solar and wind energy, we are financing. 
both captive and non captive. So, even uh, I would mention here that any RESCO going for residential projects also uh, that can be covered and supported by SIDB uh, because one end has to be MSME. And so, here RESCOs and ESCOs or EPCs they become the MSME. So, even if they take residential projects uh, across, like uh, the one scheme which has come up. Uh, uh, we can support them and we are supporting in fact. Now, the uh, next uh, intervention is uh, electric vehicle uh, in earlier slides we mentioned. So, this is the scheme EV4 Eco uh, aligned with the EV30 at the rate 30. Uh, here, under this initiative, we are supporting electric vehicles, two wheeler, three wheeler, in fact, four wheelers as well. And uh, that also to MSMEs or any aggregator. So, you would have seen any, every day somebody from Amazon, Zomato or Swiggy are coming to you uh, delivering uh, the la last mile delivery they are doing. So, all the corporates, they have also committed to convert from uh, normal petrol or diesel vehicle to electric vehicle. So, those aggregators we are supporting through our EV4 Eco. And any MSME is also if opting for electric vehicle for their cargo uh, or uh, for their staff use. So they are also under, uh, this is all being covered under 4E scheme. Uh, I'm, I'm showing this here that yes, this is the segment we are covering uh, under EV4 Eco. So I think we can conclude here because the time uh, shortage uh, allotted from that side. Only one more scheme which we have is Vision program, which we run with uh, Typac and Silvi jointly. Here, anybody going for innovative technologies and wants to commercialize that is supported at interest rate of three to five percent. And here, this can be uh, done by startups or MSMEs uh, who want to move to the next level. Uh, we do consider this where Typac does the technical evaluation. And SIPI does the uh, commercial evaluation and jointly we sanction. Uh, you would be happy to know that some of the MSMEs who have really availed from here have reached out to uh, more than 20, 25 countries in terms of their market reach uh, because they could come out with certain innovations uh, which really help them to scale up beyond. So these are uh, the purposely what we have done as a strategy is. We have not brought many schemes. Actually, core CP schemes are only two, which is end-to-end -end energy efficiency and green financing scheme. I keep on opening windows within green finance scheme. So there, there is a separate window for EV, there is a separate window for circular economy. But uh, when anybody is approaching CP, they will only approach green finance scheme because we didn't want it, people to get confused because we wanted to enthuse people to go green. So this is what is a quick uh, walkthrough of uh, the green. Uh, we, we can uh, answer a few questions if they are there. Thank you, Dr. Singh. That was quite comprehensive. Uh, there are a few questions on the chat box and I will request uh, participants to raise their hands if they want to ask a question directly. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Pranav, if you can quickly look at the questions since mm -hmm. I think you are closer to yeah. the screen. Yeah. 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 Uh, are there any questions, uh, Chai, it is there on chat box? It is there on chat. Uh, so, Prana, while you go through the questions, I will uh, uh, unmute a couple of uh, participants here to ask the question. Yeah. Nidhi? Yeah, but, uh, I can see a few hands raised. I'll, uh, I'll unmute Mr. Vishal Karya. Mr. Karya, you could ask your question. Yeah. Uh, stating, sir, how are we identifying energy efficiency? And uh, for an MSME, if we are planning to fund uh, an MSME for energy efficiency, is it based on the equipment that they are using currently or the additional equipment that they will pursue to buy? 
and what will be the identifier of an energy efficiency if it is for a machinery that they are buying? If you uh, have heard us, uh, I talked about two things. One is uh, we really get this energy efficiency hemp checkup, which is energy audit and done. And these are all impaneled uh, energy auditors uh, by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So they are able to identify the product process design technology related say gaps or, or losses which they are making. So that really helps them to have a self checkup. Second is we have a digital tool also, which is jointly powered by Bureau of Energy Efficiency and CIP, where we have on, so all the energy audits which we do, we onboard it on that uh, portal. And uh, that is able to, so anybody can key, any MSME can onboard it and key in few uh, basic aspects like the electricity consumption they are having and uh, whatever machines type they have installed. So that can really help them be where are the losses you are having on energy inefficient uh, base. And based on this, they go for investments. Besides this, as I mentioned, we have embedded 890 technologies on CIP digital uh, platform. And anybody applying uh, on CIP for any particular machine financing, it will automatically categorize. So it helps both the SME as also the uh, appraising officer that whether this is a green machine. So we have today around 800 plus technologies or I can call machine list, which is clean green energy efficient. So 80% of loans today are being uh, asked for energy efficiency and are being supported also. That itself indicates the uh, ease which it has created. Yeah. Uh, next, I can see Mr. Akash Kendri. I'm unmuting you, Mr. Akash. Uh, hello, uh, so and the uh, esteemed uh, uh, team members. So. Uh, so my question is, so I'm a global mobility expert. Uh, we are working on... loud, please. Yes. Uh, is it better now? Yeah. Uh, so, sir, we have two verticals. Uh, one is working with governments wherein we have identified, uh, you know, 5,000 industry parks in India uh, and the Gati Shakti Mission NICDC on one side of things uh, of making them circular. Uh, but since our first vertical is with vehicle OEMs, I'm a global mobility expert. So on this side of things, uh, uh, th there is a tremendous potential in uh, energy efficiency as well as circularity. Uh, but uh, our thesis is to you know uh, hold on to our equity, not dilute it, and uh, 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 on being credit positive. So uh, would the two CR policy be the, the the best way to start? Because we'll be investing on on, on our own uh, uh, IT uh, uh, infrastructure as well. So the current data co-location, uh, uh, the data center, one of the 26 subsectors of the infrastructure sec uh, status sector, is beneficial instead of the the uh, the, the usual approach of you know taking three three thousand dollars in credits from uh, Microsoft Azure and uh, working on the, uh, the 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 front side wherein we utilize vehicle telematics data. And public transport data points uh, and traffic uh, uh, and climate data. So uh, uh, there are ways to increase uh, efficiency drastically across sectors. Uh, uh, so right now I'm looking at something like a gift, uh, so the SEZ like a CPI or a IM Amdavad incubation facility, and co-locating it with one of the data centers and the servers which we buy ourselves, we custom uh, uh, assemble them and add value on the the uh, so the entire money goes in the capex. And then we can basically uh, uh, take some kind of like a, a, a lease, uh, like sorry, sorry, kind of like a debt for these, and add value on the the front end side of things. So multiple grants from different ministries can also be kind of like uh, uh, looped together in a in a project uh, 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 financing structure in such a case. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh... There are uh, several uh, support available from ministry uh, by way of subsidies and uh, in fact, some state governments are also coming up to support uh, these new emerging green sectors. Uh, we need to look at uh, 
each and everything may be uh, depending upon the project itself. And if you have something specific uh, ready case, maybe we can discuss it. So, like, uh, I would uh, suggest you one thing. Why don't you mail to us uh, or to Fiki team and they would uh, mail to us uh, your project idea. And we can, because we have a separate venture finance vertical, like uh, we are managing the green vertical, there is a direct credit vertical also. But we can help you to link up or connect with the right one. Uh, if it is only at a startup level, uh, which needs venture debt, we can attend through them. Uh, if it is purely green and uh, or it requires a mix of uh, support, we can uh, work out that. Uh, quickly, we can respond whether this is doable or not. Yeah. Next. Moving on to the next question, please. Mr. Dhanesh Sisodia, I've unmuted you. If you would like to ask a question. So just I want to know the one thing from the uh, uh, Sidby side. So what kind of a tenure we are extending for e-mobility, uh, electric mobility, uh, especially for heavy duty trucks, that is one. And what would be the turnaround time? Uh, see, as I mentioned, uh, we have two schemes. Green, uh, this uh, e-trucks would be covered under the green finance scheme. And the tenure is up to 10 years there. Okay, thank you. The turnaround is it's uh, if you uh, apply digitally, you can onboard Sidby uh, portal. You can share the connect with the Fiki team, they will connect with you all. Uh, they can share that with you all. And so, if you onboard uh, right there and up to three crores, it is totally digital journey. Uh, other than that, it has to be applied online, but it will be then appraised by a dedicated team. So, so sir, I, I, it depends on information which uh, is submitted. Uh, so, Pranav is like uh, has been the loan, uh, say, appraising team head also. Uh, so, he has seen cases. Uh, what what has been so? So, uh, if we. As I mentioned that if it is an existing unit going for expansion, maybe two to three days is also uh, one window and maybe within a week is one window. But if it is a completely greenfield unit, so it will take around three to four weeks to complete all the formalities. Okay, so I just want to know the one more thing about this. So you know the electric vehicle journey. So there is a battery change is also required in between. So after users of the asset. So any kind of an, uh, that refinancing or refunding during that tenure. So suppose after five years, battery change is required and that can be funded by CDB. There is nothing no in uh, financing and per se when we are attending to the entire EV ecosystem, but that requirement, see first we should go for this requirement. That requirement is uh, the ecosystem is anyhow evolving. So I think you shouldn't worry. So I do not see any battery being changed in e-trucks in India presently because it has just started and maybe a few trucks are there or maybe on road. So the requirement is yet to come and that industry is also going to evolve. So we both need to appreciate that as time evolves, Obviously, as per requirement, banks will also uh, customize things. And as I mentioned, we are also shaping a risk sharing facility, which will uh, sort of back power the bankers and lenders to lend to the entire EV ecosystem. So one is we are running already. Uh, we are scaling that up. So it will cover entire like four wheelers, trucks, buses and everything. So. Uh, but if you have specific proposal, do uh, share with us or uh, we are sitting in Delhi, you can uh, just connect with us and we can discuss this all. Certainly, I'll connect with you, sir. Uh, so, I'll get the contact details. So, I think uh, with all that... These, uh, all these areas which I've mentioned, five areas, we have dedicated technical and financial teams sitting with Green. So, they can also help you uh, structure also. Don't worry. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
there is one question uh, there is one question most of these are already discussed there is one question is this secure loan or unsecured loan so on that i would say uh, see the assets which are financed are obviously these are all secured loans and if uh, there are emerging sectors where even the primary security or the asset finance is not with uh, the bank as as security so there we have this resharing facility some are already running and some we are already uh, in advanced stages to roll out those uh, resharing facility support as complement to collateral so like these escos and rescos they don't have any assets which they create because wherever they do, it is owned by the entity where they create, right? So there also funding rescues and escos is possible only through this sort of sharing back uh, power. And that is what SIDBI excels in. Uh, the model which we have evolved is being replicated globally. So uh, we have around eight to 10 experience running this sort of formatted programmatic approach. I think uh, we can conclude. Uh, there are a couple of more hands raised if you allow us a couple of more minutes to take up those questions. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sure. Nidhi, quickly, please unmute. Mr. Chitranjit, I've unmuted you if you would like to ask a question. I was just saying. Uh, want to ask uh, there are cluster of msmes uh, those who are producing and their organizations uh, who wants to go for this however i feel that other than energy audit we say that's a uh, run of the mill thing a comprehensive sustainability audit is required for that msme because it's energy waste water everything is a comprehensive thing there from net zero perspective there uh, uh, the first thing is a comprehensive study for them. Is there any opportunity or is there anything that you fund or you have some funds available for such studies for them separately? Why, what typically IFC and these guys do the funding? Um, something like this. So we have not thought about it, but we can really look at it because that is what is as a development institution uh, we are meant for. Uh, like uh, Moradabad, I mentioned, we started not having any uh, the previous background on that. Similarly, if you find and if you're working or uh, if you have a niche in that area, uh, to share that uh, model with us and where from it is uh, accredited and all, uh, we can really uh, look at it because that is what is, as I mentioned, MSME clusters going green is a priority for us. And we can always look beyond uh, greening. I mean, it's uh, beyond energy efficiency, uh, but, but uh, you would also appreciate that everything is participative. Uh, well, yes. And the free things are never appreciated <laughs> for law. Okay. So some, what I understand the participative thing, percentage uh, model may be available there. 50, 50 sharing or some partial. For there is no formatting. I will. I can structure it based on impact. So, for example, in Moradabad, uh, for first hundred transition, we are bearing the cost from coal fire to gas fire. Right. So this is. Uh, but we are a uh, development financial institution and not a, a donor institution. Right. So from that angle, whatever what we do is. Anything which can lead to replication or uh, emerge sustainable, we test it uh, through developmental sort of support. Uh, but it is strong, but that that helps uh, organizations to leverage uh, support from elsewhere. For example, Moradabad or uh, just 70 uh, units we have supported, many more organizations have come in to now venture out there. That is what we bring out. This is a catalytic sort of support. So we can have a look at uh, what you are doing and how you are planning to do. And uh, I think that, that all we can take. Thank you, Mr. Sina. Thank you. Sure. Uh, some participants are asking for uh, some kind of an energy audit report. Is anything available uh, for them to look at? 
so energy audit report why do they want they should get uh, their own uh, enterprise energy audit done because seeing other uh, medical report what do you get or not <laughs> right so yeah. last question Nidhi. Mr. Indradev, I want me to do, please. Yes, uh, I have a small question. I, I am representing a small finance bank. So I have a, a question that is there any green product channel for uh, from CDB which provides support to bank for financing tailored green product for a small, for example, a small solar energy product to rural household in a small ticket size ranging from 1 lakh to 2 lakh? So we are uh, like under our EV program, we are funding presently NBFCs which are totally focused on EV, right? And these are all triple B and below rated also. Uh, we have been supporting them under our, this program. Uh, we, can, we have a separate division uh, which has been uh, like sort of suggested by us to prioritize uh, SMBs and NBFCs uh, who want to create a green portfolio. Happy to discuss uh, with you more on this or, or your team which is working on this. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, great, there are some questions on the chat. I think we will take help from Pranavji subsequently to answer those queries. But for the time being, we won't take much of your time, Dr. Singh. Thank you so much for talking in detail about the multiple funding options supporting environmental friendly projects and also painstakingly answering every question that was put up today. Thank you. We really appreciate your support and your time. Thank you, Pranav, for your support here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so thank you to you for uh, taking forward this very crucial agenda of building capacity. Yeah, all the best. Thank, thank you. you. So much. I really appreciate your support and thank you to all the participants for joining in today.